Good morning. It's the second Sunday after Easter. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace to you and peace, from God our Father, and from our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. The Word of God I have for you today is from John's first letter, chapter 3, verse 11. For this is the message which you have heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. Heavenly Father, as we open your word today, we open our hearts to you. We ask that you would speak clearly to us through your word. We believe that your word is truth. We ask your blessing as we enter this world of truth. And we ask, Lord, that you would strengthen our faith and increase our love. We give you glory, honour and praise in the precious name of Jesus, your Son and our Lord. Amen. My beloved friends, just recently I read a quote from St. Francis that basically said, preach the good news all the time and if necessary, use words. Preach the truth all the time, preach the gospel, but if necessary, use words. This little quote really resonated with me uh, because I've got a little sign in my office that I've had there for years and years and years, and it says, if you were accused of being a Christian, would the evidence be there to prove it? And I use that as a reminder to take a look at my life and at my witness. This is a very, very important reminder. Because I think one of the saddest things that I've ever heard about the Christian church from people who are outside of the faith, one of the saddest criticisms is that there is not a lot of love often in Christian circles, that there seems to be a fair bit of hypocrisy. And sadly, it's true. Two weeks ago, we celebrated Easter. We celebrated the fact that our Lord Jesus Christ came out of the tomb alive and that he is alive forevermore and that he lives. He truly has risen from the dead. He is risen indeed. We worship and glorify, honour and live for a living God, a living God. And Jesus is the absolute uh, manifestation of God's love. Three little words in John's first letter, God is love, God is love. And Jesus was the total manifestation of this love. And the question is that people who meet us on a day-to-day -day basis, as we go about our daily lives, do they know from interaction with us that God is love? That really is the big question. Do our lives bear living testimony to the fact that God is love? To the gospel that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, so that whosoever believes on him should not perish but have everlasting life. And there's a, another little quote that comes along with the other two that speaks to me very powerfully as well. And that simply says, you may be the only Bible someone will read today. These three quotes, preach the good news of the gospel all the time and if necessary use words, if you are accused of being a Christian, would the evidence be there to prove it? And that you may be the only Bible that someone reads today. Are three little quotes that I like to use to take stock of my spiritual state. And as we look at these three things, let's be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. 
and see if he puts a finger on anything that we need to take care of. Easter evening, that very first day of the resurrection, the disciples had gathered together in the upper room where they had celebrated the Passover with Jesus. They were muddled, they didn't really know what to think. Some of their, from their midst had said that they'd seen Jesus and they were talking about these things and wondering and we read, so when it was evening on that day, on the first day of the week, and when the doors were shut where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. And when he said this, he showed them both his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. So Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, their sins have been forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, their sins have been retained. Jesus appeared to his disciples that evening and he brought them peace and joy and then he sent them. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. As the Father sent me, I also send you. Where? Into the world. He's sending them out into the world to testify to the fact that he is alive. And please notice that Jesus didn't send them without equipping them. He breathed on them the Holy Spirit as a foretaste to Pentecost when he sent his Spirit fully. You cannot go without the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one who empowers us, who works through us, who gives us the testimony. He helps us to be what Jesus said that we are, the salt of the earth, the light of the world. He gives us the empowerment. So Paul could say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, or I can do all things through him who empowers me from within. It's the Holy Spirit who helps us to obey the first commandment, the greatest commandment, to love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, strength and mind, and to love our neighbour as ourselves. God is empowering us to be good witnesses. Without the Holy Spirit, we're like a car that has no petrol or power. If the petrol tank is empty or if you have an electric car and the battery is empty, the car is going nowhere. The Holy Spirit is the energy. He is the one who propels us. And since the day of Pentecost, which we'll celebrate in a few weeks' time, since the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit was poured out on the disciples. And since then, at the moment of our baptism, the Holy Spirit comes and dwells within our hearts. Over and over again, the Word of God tells us, though, to walk in the Spirit. Jesus said to his disciples, receive the Holy Spirit. When we walk in the Spirit, it means that we let go. It means that we rely totally and fully upon him. And when we rely upon the Holy Spirit, when we're walking in the Holy Spirit, then the Holy Spirit is working through us. And it means that the love of Christ, the love of God is flowing through us. And our testimony is pure and powerful. And it's important that we walk in the Spirit all the time, that we listen to Him. That we never ever turn away from the cross, that we have our eyes firmly focused upon the cross. We need to not look to ourselves, but look to Him. If we look to ourselves and we look away from the cross and we stop relying upon the Holy Spirit, our witness, our testimony is muddied. The light doesn't shine so brightly anymore. The salt loses its saltiness. It loses its flavor. 
Paul writing to the Galatians wrote, But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not carry out the desires of the flesh. For the flesh sets its desire against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. For these are in opposition to one another, that you may not do the things that you please. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the deeds of the flesh are evident, which are immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, outbursts of anger, disputes, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these, of which I forewarn you, just as I have forewarned you, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. Now those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. Let us not become boastful, challenging one another, envying one another. The fruit of the Holy Spirit is the evidence of a life that is walked in the Spirit. It's evidence that we truly are the children of God. Jesus said you'll know a, a tree by its fruit. A good tree bears good fruit, a bad tree bears bad fruit. The fruit of the Spirit that I just read to you is the evidence of a life that is in Christ. If this fruit is large and juicy and wonderful, and if it's evident in our life, then things are good. But if in reading this list, we find ourselves and more we're living by the lusts of the flesh and not by the fruit of the Spirit, then we need to see what's happened. Why is there a blockage? What's going on? And if we ask God the Holy Spirit to pinpoint what's wrong, He will. And He helps us to bring it back in order. God desires for our witness to be good. In terms of being a lighthouse, He wants the light to shine brightly, not to have anything that's causing the light to be distorted. As I mentioned, maybe you are the only Bible someone will read today. That's a very powerful thought. And that is why you often hear me say in morning devotions and in sermons that we need to strive to be the best possible version of ourselves that we can be. And in order for that to happen, we need to continually walk in the Spirit. We need to continually offer ourselves to God as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to Him. We need to daily Say, Lord, here I am, I surrender. All to Jesus, I surrender. All to Him, I freely give. Or pray, take my hand and lead me over life's rough way. Whatever works for you, whatever way you surrender to God, you need to continually do it. The problem is that sometimes we start off okay, and then we think, oh, I've got this, I can do it. And that's when you fall. You see, the best place to be is, Lord, I can't do it, but you can do it through me. So let's go. If we rely upon our own wisdom, if we rely upon the world's philosophies and wisdom, we're going to fall flat on our face. Our testimony will be rubbish. If we rely upon the Holy Spirit, then our testimony will be good. The Holy Spirit never lifts us up and never says, look what a great example I am of the Christian. No, the Holy Spirit points to Jesus, points to Jesus. He will take what is mine, said Jesus, and give it unto you. And we will glorify him in return. After Easter, the number of disciples rapidly grew. The early church started off and grew and grew and grew because their testimony was pure and clean. They walked in the Spirit. They relied upon the Holy Spirit. The light was shining brightly. They were walking and living by God's Word, by the Holy Spirit. May God give to us that our lives would always be lived 
in the Spirit. Jesus said, A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another even as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this all men will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. What a powerful text that is. How will people know that we are Jesus' disciples because we wear a cross or we have Jesus saves written on our car or on our t-shirt? No. By the love we have for one another. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples by the love you have for one another. That is the witness. That is the Bible that people need to read in us. That is the evidence that should be there to say, yes, this person is a Christian. Preach the gospel always, and when necessary, use words. Our actions, our lives, should be a living testimony to the Lord Jesus Christ. Love is the testimony. Love is the first and the major fruit of the Holy Spirit. Martin Luther said Paul could have just simply said the fruit of the Spirit is love because all the other things that follow are really part of describing love. May God help us to be the true light, to be the true salt, to bring glory to Jesus in everything we say and do. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this new day. We thank you for your mercies that are new every morning and we proclaim that great is your faithfulness. We thank you that you love us with an everlasting love. We thank you, Lord, that you are love. We thank you that you so loved the world, that you came and you laid down your life, you shed your blood, so that whosoever believes on you should not perish but have everlasting life. We thank you that you are the way, the truth and the life and that no one comes to the Father except by you. Today and you, right here, right now, we surrender ourselves to you. We offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to you. This is our reasonable service of worship. Help us not to be conformed to this world, but to be transformed with the renewing of our minds, to know what is the good, perfect and precious will of God. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we ask that you take us by the hand, that you lead us and guide us. We receive from you the Holy Spirit that you poured out at Pentecost. We know the Holy Spirit abides in our hearts if we are Christians, but we do not know the Holy Spirit well enough. And I pray, Lord, that you would help us to, to realize and to walk in the Spirit, not in the flesh. Heavenly Father, we can't do it in our own power, but you have given us the Holy Spirit who empowers us within, so that we can say, along with the Apostle Paul, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ who empowers me from within. So thank you, Lord. We bless and praise you. We ask your blessing over your church, your bride. We pray, Lord, that you would bless her and keep her. We pray that you would cleanse her, renew her. We pray, Lord, that you would take away all the dross and leave us with the gold. Begin with us. Begin with our own lives. Lord, we remove the log out of our own eye before we attempt to remove the speck out of a brother or sister's eye. Heavenly Father, we surrender to you. We humble ourselves before you. We ask your forgiveness where we have sinned. And we ask that you lead us and guide us. Teach us your way, O Lord, that we may walk in your truth. Unite our hearts to fear your name, that we may walk in your truth. I pray, Lord, for every listener, everyone who's listening to this message, that you would just bless them. That, Lord, if you have put your finger upon anything in their lives that needs changing, that they would repent of their sins and come to you and be cleansed and filled in you. Begin in my heart, Lord. Those things that are wrong in my life, I confess and I bring to you. Ask for your forgiveness and ask that you help me to always be a light that shines brightly, to bring glory and honor to your name. Heavenly Father, we pray for our country. We pray for our leaders and those in authority, we pray that you give them wisdom and understanding and help them to govern correctly. 
Lord God, Heavenly Father, we pray for your mercy. We pray for an end to the wars in the Ukraine and the Middle East and Israel and Palestine and other places around the world. We pray for our brothers and sisters that are persecuted for their faith. Lord, have mercy upon them and strengthen them. And Lord, I pray for those that persecute them and, and forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. And I pray that their hearts would melt and turn to you. We thank you for all who call upon your name and are saved. We thank you for the mighty miracles that are occurring around the world where people are coming out of religious bondage and learning the freedom of walking with you and confessing you as Lord and Savior. So thank you, Father. We just ask your blessing. And we now combine all of our prayers as we pray for all around us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. God be with you till we meet again.